Thanks, Riv. Kiwi Kid, yesterday till today, yesterday you didn't kill a turret, today you didn't have a turret given up on your own side. What changed overnight for you guys? Um, I told Zingy to stop hesitating because sometimes he hesitates too much on, a, on his plays. And I think that's like actually been one of the biggest like detriments to our team. Because like, I think I just was too hard on him before. Like, and then if he messed up, I think I was too hard and that's my fault. Like, I think I was just being a bad teammate. And I was like, hey, like, do what you think is good. And then ever since then, well, I guess it's only one game, so I don't really want to say. I don't. It's a good start. Yeah, it's exactly. a good start. It's a good start. It's a good start. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. And our team as a whole started talking more. And no, we just had a clean game. And of course, like two to three kills in the laning phase is huge nowadays in this meta. Uh, it's cause, I think it's because like items snowball so hard now, and people actually know how to snowball. And yeah, of course, two to three kills like really help early. Like it's actually really big. So. I think that's why we, we're so confident in this game. All right, well, even taking it back to the champ select phase, even, Azingi picked Zach again. He's pretty much the only person in the North American LCS to do that pick. In a world of Gragas's and Rek'Sai's and Sejuani's, he's still Zach, but it was super effective for him this game. Did you talk about that pick a little bit? Yeah, Sejuani was still up, and but we just, we, he really likes Zach, and I think his gank patterns are really good on Zach, and actually, we've been using Zach a lot against Thresh because he's actually pretty good at canceling the Lantern. And actually, Nautilus Zack is a really good gank combo. And I know it's like not really viable to rely on ganks in this meta, but I know we did, so it worked out. Well, definitely a good start with this game. The COG game was a completely different story. Wildly inconsistent from day to day. What will you guys be doing this next week to prepare for week two now that you're one and one after week one? Um. I'm going to do a lot more research on, on 1v2s. Not just 1v2s, but team comps. Because I think I have the 1v2 pretty much down. But it's just some team comps, you need to play the 1v2 in a different way. And even though there's a textbook manner, which I like to play it, I need to be ready to adapt in as a team as well. All right, well, thank you very much, Kiwi Kid. Congratulations on the victory today. Very lopsided for you guys, so it must feel good. Let's send it over to the analyst desk for a breakdown of the game. Thank you, Jat. 1-0 start here for Dignitas. Got to feel good after defeating Cloud9 today, who in yeah. turn beat TSM yesterday. You know, looking at how they did this, I have to say, tipping my cap to Azingi in this game, for yeah. me, the MVP on Dignitas. His pressure around the map in the early game was absolutely stellar. Focus that Ash that Kobe hates so much. <laughs> yeah, and this one's so impressive, not just because he sort of picks the flash, but this uh, elastic slingshot will land regardless of whether or not Ash actually flashes here. He, he leads as though he walks it, but also managed to, to land the edge in terms of the flash. So uh, very incredibly, incredibly well aimed. The only way Sneaky jukes that is by walking basically sideways or backwards, which just gets him killed. Yeah, right. my favorite part of this is they've put the bush, they've got the sentinels going back and forth, they have the pink ward in there. Azingi, he keeps coming top lane, and this is the lane that you should shut down. It's an immobile Ash, you have gank assistance from a slow from rent, you also have so much CC in the Nautilus's kit, and on top of that, if you shut this Ash down, there's no other threat on the team except for an AP Kog'Maw that needs time to ramp up. And if you are like going to be keep, keep being proactive before the Kog'Maw gets to those item spikes, before he gets to that level 16, mm -hmm. you're going to run away with the game and they counter built him too. Kiwi Kid was saying items are very snowball-y right now. They definitely seem to be in that matchup when you have one AD threat that's shut down and then an AP Kog'Maw that needs tons of resources and then you build like, all these Spirit Visage, you're like, oh, we got an Aegis of Legion, lock it very early on. So yep. there was pretty much no threat there, and they started diving turrets very early on. Yeah, yeah. that's the cool thing about having multiple tanks in the team, right? And, and it was so impressive, too, like the coordination between uh, Kiwi Kid and uh, Core JJ as well, where the Nautilus would play overly aggressive. He'd start yeah. fights with his body, tank two turret shots, knowing that Core JJ is going to pull him right back out. And the fight is started, and the whole like advantage of this turret as a defensive structure is basically nullified because you just have a target switch and then more stuns come out. Uh, Callista, like, man, it's, it's turret dive fun. done easy at that point. 
I mean, I think the, you know, what Kiwi Kid said there in that a couple kills early can swing that lane so heavily. We saw the mm -hmm. forced double Dorans there for Ash, the early Bloodthirster for the Callisto, which is an already an earlier item spike. So sure. delaying the eye edge even further, picking up the Bloodthirster and then level two boots made it such a huge uphill battle for Cloud9. Now, when we look at Cloud9, though, Incarnation, when, well, second day, playing Kogma on the stage without as much pressure onto that mid lane as he did with his matchup against Bjergsen, yeah. seemed to find more success, was up in CS at 10 minutes as opposed to down 40 CS. So sure. a little bit, uh, you know, maybe so some good news to take away for Cloud9 in that sense from uh, this game. There, there's two things to think about with that one. So, uh, so one, e easier matchup and second, easier opponent and easier opponent team that right there's much less mid focus as well so like a lot of things set up for incarnation mm -hmm. to do well we also watched him a lot less this game so like in terms of unforced errors we just actually just we saw that cannon minion. See it. we saw yeah. one saw cannon that, saw that cannon minion <laughs> cue so uh, but yes i think incarnation generally is going to settle in better over time in this game he was i think like the best performing player on his team in the first 10 minutes like highest cs was actually winning his lane um that's not a lot to go off of Certainly, C9 still has a lot of room to go. And as if we also expand past incarnation, Medio said yesterday, I don't know how to shot call. Well, shout. Shot call. <laughs> Thank you. I was going to say shout. He pass. could That's shout, wrong. He could shout call, though. Right He's he could bad shout at call shout as well. passing from behind. He's also bad at shot calling from behind. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're seeing C9, unfortunately, summer split, split that goes to Worlds. And, you know, Medios has stuff to learn. Incarnation has stuff to learn. And, and, of course, we saw their opponents getting better over time. They get house putting their lineup together, playing even better now in summer split. And you were talking about the Kog'Maw pick there. I actually don't really like that pick here. Hmm. First off, because there's so much backline access from Dignitas, they're going to reach that Kog'Maw with the Gnar, with the... Uh, with the fact they have Zack as well and the Novelist just pointing and clicking on him, there's a lot of backline access that he didn't have to deal with previously. And then on top of that, it's not something that's able, and especially the way that the game played out, you're not able to really roam on Kogma. You need to stay in the lane and farm. And the game got out of hand very early on. So in this situation, it was not that great of a pick, but that's in hindsight. Sure, I think it's hard to, to pick champions betting that you don't get down 5,000 gold yeah. in landing phase, certainly. Like, is Zingy going to gank top and I need to roam? It's like, uh... Right, but, but you're right in terms of the whole backline access thing. Like, Kog'Maw does have very good wave clear. Like, he's theoretically a pretty good turtle yep. sort of champion. Um, yeah, I don't want to blame another Cog, certainly. I want to pretty much say it was all Dignitas finding a lot of really oh, good ganks in a row. Absolutely. They super deserve this win. Although, I, I would be happy to say that given the fact that they saw a fair amount of this backline access... No, like choosing two immobile carries, both in Ash and Kogma, is risky when you've shown so far yeah. in this split that your team is not able to secure early leads, right? Yeah. The trend now for C9 is to go down early. Another thing that supports that is the idea that they have not yet secured a dragon this split <laughs> oh, in two yes, games, yeah. right? Five yesterday, four today. That is worrisome as well. The fact that they're at the moment, it seems like their focus needs to be getting out of lane phase. They can't even That's begin true. to think about the the global objectives and i'm not entirely sure how they're going to uh, repair that uh if the if they can't deal with the, the the lane pressure yeah so there's a couple things about that so one right we can go back to the incarnation point he's still nervous on stage he said as much actually in um in game chat to me before the game started he's like i'm still a bit nervous today um balls has been not the same top lane he was back in like 2013 early 2014 it He's not bad, but he's no longer, like, the best top laner NA, right? He's winning his lane much less frequently now. Um, Medios has better competition here as well. It's really Sneaky and Lemonation who are, like, the typical lane winners. And those are the guys who carried them in the TSM match as well. Sneaky and Lemon were doing awesome. And here, they got wrecked by some really good play by Dignitas. Suddenly, yeah, this early laning phase you're talking about, this roughness for C9, there are no bright points anymore. All right, well, maybe some rethinking for Cloud9 to do when it comes to champion select and getting through that early game, but a fantastically played game on the side of Dignitas here, picking up a win, going one-on-one -on, -one on the week. We're going to patch up the Nexus for our next Rumble on the Rift. Team Impulse versus Counterlogic Gaming. You're watching the North American LCS. Is not ducking, is feeling down, hype him up. They feel like if it's getting stolen, he doesn't have enough protection in the mid lane, and it's gonna be right. It can't be a surprise. I'm bad, I'm bad. Okay, okay, back, back, back. Kite, kite, kite. I'm, I'm mega. Okay, let's go. Mega, mega. Okay. 
Help, 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 help Gumsu. Help, 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 that turret, but I don't oh, think he had enough no. eyes to find the rest of the team. The Bloodthirster in there, able to help him and build him right back up. Good take down a Zingy. He hops away, though, and he's able to stay alive. Gamsu now on the front line. Sneaky can't turn around, but only to Arrow, rather. Dignitas takes down Cloud9.